in the last couple of weeks, we talked about some really cool stuff. We talked, we've been going through Ephesians, and we're nearly through it. Thank the Lord. I've aged going through this book. So we talked about be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. It's just not a strong relationship. I mean, you got to do something with it. Then we talked last week about the devil's schemes. Oh, my goodness. Did we get emails on that one? Well, today, we talk about the next scripture right after this. Here it is. Are you ready? Just finished talking about devil schemes, and he says, and pray, Ephesians 6, 18, and pray in the Holy Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert, and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray for me, Paul that whenever I speak words may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mysteries of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in the chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. So he first starts off, and I love this. I'm going to go through this real quick because I got three stories I want to tell you. Pray in the Holy Spirit, and what he says is how? With all kinds of prayers and requests. So All kinds of prayers, as you know, we've studied the prayer wheel many times. We're not going to do that today. But the prayer wheel is shows you all the different kinds of praying. You 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 praise, you you thanksgiving, uh, meditation, intercession, praying for others, petition, praying for yourself, word praying, praying the word of God, just speaking the word of God, um, uh, speaking in tongues, all these different kinds of things. But there's more. There's fasting and prayer. There's um, spiritual warfare prayer where you speak. Jesus was great at this. Where he spoke to the disease or he spoke to the demon and said, "Come out now," and and, and so forth. Many kinds of prayers and with many kinds of requests. But the key to this prayer and request thing is this, praying the Holy Spirit. I have learned that when you praise and you thanksgiving uh, and you worship him, you usher in the presence of the Holy Spirit. See, what, what you're doing is you're trying to go from the head to the heart. He wants to hear your heart. He's tired of hearing your head and your mouth. He wants to hear your heart. And as you worship him and as you praise him, you usher in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And yes, the Holy Spirit's in you and and lives in you, but the point is it just stirs the presence of the Holy Spirit up, and then he can start to hear your heart. And I love this. Where, where there's sometimes when I've been praying for a need and the Lord says, I don't want you to pray, I just want you to thank me. Just start praising me and thanking me and worship me, and I'll move the gates of heaven. You've already asked, now just start worship me and praise. And you just praise him, and, and you can just feel heaven moving. Then he goes on, and he says, be alert. And, and the key here is this, be alert for God's people through prayer. And this is not only visual, but this is hearing a sense in your heart. I mean, there's sometimes when I wake up in the middle of the night, and uh, I might not even know your name, and, and I'm truthful about this. I really don't know all, everybody's name in this church, but I do know your face. Well, when I used to see your face, now I just know your eyes. But the irony of this whole thing is I will see your face, And I won't even know the person, but I'll say, Lord, you know that person you just put in my head. I pray for them in the name of Jesus, that you'll bless them. I come against any power. I start to see, I'm doing spiritual warfare. I come against any power of demonic activity, devil schemes that will try to rock. Boom, boom, boom. You will not believe how many times people have, um, I've been talking to them, I said, you know, two weeks ago I prayed for you on such and such day. Oh, thank you so much. I nearly was in a car accident, or I went to the doctor, or da-da-da-da. People, you, you have to be alert. And, and a lot of us are just downright selfish. We're only alert for ourselves or our family. You're an ingrown toenail. When you start to bless others outside your family, God will start to bless you and your family. Now, then he says, hey, be alert. How? By praying for God's people. I, I, I pray for the persecuted church every day. I pray for the brothers and sisters in Haiti right now. Can you imagine all these people who have accepted Christ in Afghanistan because of the war, the Americans, Canadians, and British being there, leading all these people in Afghanistan, Lord, and now they are in Afghanistan, and the Taliban are coming in, and the Taliban love to kill Christians. I mean, they, they, it's unbelievable. 
And then he goes on and he says this, pray for me, Paul. Let, let me just read this to you because this is so incredible. In verse 19, pray for me, Paul, that whenever I speak words may be given to me so that I will, notice words may be given to me. How? Through the Holy Spirit. So that I will fearlessly make known the mysteries of the gospel for which I'm an ambassador in Christ. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Let, let me talk to you about this whole thing about praying uh, for Paul. Number one, Paul, we pray for Paul that he would speak fearlessly. And this is an application for you. Do you speak fearlessly for God or are you scared? I mean, when was the last time you really witnessed for Jesus? Fear is stopping the average Christian from sharing Jesus. So somebody says to me, how do I speak fearlessly? Pray in the Holy Spirit. Where you get the Holy Spirit to touch in, my stories later on will explain this. Number two, be alert in the Holy Spirit. See, uh, Blackaby in the book Experience of God, he says when you walk into a room, it's not what you can do, but what is God doing or what God is not doing so that you can help him. See, the point is this, I'm alert to see what's happening. I mean, if I have a brother who's hurting, boom, I start praying for him. I start to help him. It, it's just not rocket science. It's not like God has to wake me up for it. It's just common sense. But, but what we need to do is we need to pray in the Holy Spirit that God will help me. See, the Bible says, you, Acts 1, 8, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you shall be witness. And, and what you learn is the more you get the Holy Spirit upon you and through you, the more you start to share the love of Jesus. Let me give you an example. The grocery store over here the other day, I was there and nobody was in line. Matter of fact, no, nobody was in the grocery store, really, very few people. And the, the, the lady who was uh, cashing out my stuff, I said to her, how are you? She says, all right. I said, no, seriously, how are you? I said, nobody's in line, tell me the truth. She said, well, I'm not doing good. I said, why? And I just knew the Holy Spirit wanted me to talk to her. And, and she says, well, I, I'm tired of wearing these masks. I have a hard time breathing with them. I'm here all day, and, and, and the, it doesn't matter which mask I wear. It's not good. I said, can I pray that God will bless you? She says, what? I said, just 10 seconds. I said, Jesus, just bless her. Give her a good day. Amen. She looks at me and says, thank you. I really appreciate that. Now, see, I never went from A to Z with the gospel of Jesus. I just I gave her a nugget. But let me share this with you. It's a seed that will grow. Then number two, speak fearlessly. Number two, write this, make known the mysteries of the gospel. Now, in John chapter 3, Nicodemus comes to Jesus, and what does Jesus do? He says, Nicodemus, watch this, make known the mysteries of the gospel. Remember, Jesus said, I will make you fishers of men. You've got to give bait to the person. So Jesus says to Nicodemus, hey, you need to be born again. And he goes, well, what does that mean? Like, you want me to enter my mother's womb? the second time, like, and, and all of a sudden Jesus got to share the gospel, the mysteries of the gospel. But in John chapter four, he doesn't say the woman at the well, yo, you need to be born again. That, she would have said, get lost. But he says, I'll give you living water. And she didn't want to come to the well because of how people treated her. She wasn't a good person. And she loved this whole thing, but she became curious. And Jesus, through that, gave the gospel, the mystery of the gospel. Everybody has a key to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everybody has a key. Matter of fact, I talked to an atheist a number of years ago, and he was saying to me, he says, I don't have a key for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I said, okay, that's fine. Let's not waste time. Let me just pray for you. He says, no, I don't want you to pray for me. I said, well, you're an atheist. You're not going to be scared of my prayer. There's no such thing as God. I said, come on, suck it up. Let's pray. He says, no, you're not going to pray for me. He says, you're going to put something on me. I said, whoa, atheists don't believe anything be put on you. Hello, you can't be an atheist. He said, okay, go ahead. And I said, Lord, teach him that he's not an atheist. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> A few months later, he comes to me and says, I'm an agnostic. I said, well, let's pray. No. He said, I was an atheist when you prayed for me. And I'm now in Nasa. I said, well, let me pray. Maybe you'll become a born-again Christian. We'll just keep praying. 
He said, no. I said, well, it doesn't really matter if I pray for you or not. When you leave, I'm going to be praying for you, so you might as well stand there and take it. He goes, no. He said, you messed me up the last time. I'm not. I said, I said good. Walk away. I'll still pray. You become a nun. Now he goes to some church. He doesn't go to our church, which really bothers me. It drives me nuts. He should come here. I don't know what his problem is. So somebody says to me, how do you make known the mysteries of the gospel? Pray in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will lead you. Remember the Bible says you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you'll be a witness. Why are you doing this by yourself? Why don't you ask the Holy Spirit to help you? And some of you, you're absolutely flipping crazy, okay? And I just say this in love. You, you know, well, when I get good at witnessing, then, then I'll start to witness. Hello. That's like a baby who says, well, when I get good at walking, I'll start to walk. No, walk. Okay, take a few stumbles. I, it's not going to hurt you. Humble yourself. Matter of fact, some of the dumbest things I've ever said has led people to Christ. Just crazy. Dumbest things. One of my stories will tell it. Number three. Then he goes on and he says, be an ambassador. Now, the word ambassador here means you have the authority of the kingdom of God, you have the representation from God, and you have citizenship of God, but there's one more thing he gives you. Your family. You are the prince. You are co-heirs with Jesus Christ. You are not second class. So when God sends you as an ambassador, he's sending family. So I'm representing Father God because he is my father. Now, can I ask you something? I say this in love, especially to the people in the balcony because you're so far away, I can't see you. When was the last time you walked around like you were an ambassador for God? You were representing dad in heaven. I mean, when was the last time you prayed with authority? When was the last time you made heaven thrilled and hell shake? I mean, most of us, you know, Jesus died, rose again, he's in my life, da, 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 da. Well, when was the last time you were strong in the Lord and in his mighty power and you really had that authority? You made the demons shudder. Jesus said these things come through prayer and fasting. Okay, why? When you pray and fast and you seek God and you pray in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit fills you and gives you the power to have that authority, to be able to be that ambassador. So pray in the Holy Spirit and be alert. Now, I tell you three stories, and I need to tell you them really quick, but all three stories you've heard, and I apologize, but I'm going to ask you to give me permission to tell them. Am I allowed to tell these three stories? Okay, thank you very much. I will, but just because of you over there. The rest of you people, I don't like, but I like you. Okay, so here we go. The first one is this. When I was 14 years old, they had this school in Peterborough called AIM, Ambassadors in Mission. AIM, A-I-M, Ambassadors in Mission. And what it did was it taught high school students how to witness. And I was 14 years old, and I would like to learn how to witness. So when we went there, the first day they're teaching, you would get taught in the morning, then you go in the afternoon, and you try to witness. The first day we're, we're there, they're teaching us how to witness. They're talking about prayer, and I'm going, why are you talking so much about prayer? Tell us what to say, how to do it, how to get in the conversation. Give us the logistics. And the guy was teaching you that logistics mean nothing without the Holy Spirit. The key to witnessing it's not that you know all the lines or you memorize the verses. Yes, all those things are important. And they gave us a few lines, like if you died right now, where would you go? All this stuff. But, but, and they gave us scriptures. But the key, the guy said the key is prayer. So you're full of the Holy Spirit. Let me give you an illustration of this before. I'll just sidetrack. This morning, uh, when I was coming to church, I was coming to church this morning at 5 o'clock this morning, and I went through... Uh, McDonald's. I go through McDonald's on my way to church Sunday morning, and I ordered a chicken McMuffin sandwich. If you haven't had a chicken McMuffin sandwich, I'm telling you something. They're going to be in heaven. They're really good, okay? Not as good as the Big Mac, but close, okay? So when, but they don't serve Big Mac at 5 o'clock in the morning, which I've talked to them about. They need to correct that, okay? So what happened is she gave me a chicken McMuffin sandwich, but she likes me so much she gave me two of them. So on the way to church, I had a, I've, mm, 
I filled up my, when, uh, you know that my truck was empty the other day, I had to fill up with gas. And this is what this guy said when I'm 14 years old. Get filled up with the Holy Spirit before you go witnessing. Pray in the Holy Spirit and, and then ask the Holy Spirit to help you be alert. Okay, so we, Richard and I, Richard is from Montreal and he's a few years older. We go out and we're walking down the street and we're supposed to knock on doors just to see if we get in any casual conversation. Not to bug people, just get in conversation. And we walk up, it's summertime, around 27 Celsius outside. Walk up the door and the screen door is there but the front door is open. And I hear a lady yelling in the house. And I knock, I go, hello, hello. And she yells, get in here. And I go, excuse me. And she goes, get in here. And she, I go in and there's a lady lying on the couch and she is in labor and she's huge. Like she is deep and wide. And, and all of a sudden, I look at her, and she grabs my hand, and she says, help me. And I said, what do you want? And like, I'm 14 years old. I'm not supposed to go through this, okay? I'm too young, right? And, and, and Richard and I had been praying that the Holy Spirit would use us, but this is not the way I thought he would use us, okay? Like, I'm not delivering a baby. I'm there just to lead her to Jesus. What is God's problem? And she squeezed my hand. So, Dave, she nearly broke my, my hand. I thought, oh, my goodness, I'm going with her to the hospital. She's counseling. And, and all of a sudden, she says, for my husband. And Richard, who was a few years older than me, he, he's half Italian and half English. He forgot his English. And she kept phoning, and he kept saying it in Italian to the husband, and I'm yelling at him, it's English, and he finally gets English out, and, and, and the husband said, oh, I'm on my way, I'm on my way, and she squeezing my hand and screaming, and I don't know what to do, so I bow my head. See, you don't need five hours of prayer, you just need to get it from your heart. I said, oh, Jesus, help me. Holy Spirit, show me what to do, and trust me, I was alert okay, but not in the spiritual realm. And all of a sudden, the stupidest line comes out. See, they taught me this line. If you died right now, where would you go? And I said this to the lady. I go, if you died right now, where would you go? And she nearly broke my hand. She goes, am I dying? Am I in And she starts freaking out. I said, no, you're not dying. It's wrong question. And Richard's yelling at me, stupid question. Ask her something else. I said, I said, wouldn't you like to bring this baby into the world with Jesus so this baby has eternal hope? And all of a sudden, in labor, she looks at me and goes, yes. I go, really? Like, you know, because it, like, the first question didn't work, but the second one did. I was more shocked. She says, yes, pray with me. I said, oh, okay. But I haven't gone through all the scriptures that they want me. It doesn't matter. Just pray. Like, and, you know, like, some of us are so dumb. We need to do all the routine. Like, just go with the Spirit, Right? And I pray with her, her husband came in, and, and I, I said to them, I said, go, we'll shut the door, and stuff like this, and we're walking back, and, and I have no idea what, and, and we get back, and the pastor of the church in Peterborough's there, I said, hey, this lady just had a baby, and they're at the hospital, a husband, and she accepted Christ, he didn't, maybe you should go visit. And he got in his car immediately, went over to the hospital in Peterborough, and led both of them to Christ, and, and prayed for the baby, and, and they started to attend the church in Peterborough. Now, isn't that the craziest thing? Here, here's, here, can I just share this with you? This is not rocket science. All of hell wants to give you fear to shut you up. Okay? And I'm not there to preach hell to them. I'm just there to, to you know, share. If they don't want to hear, that's fine. Let's move on. Uh, the second one, it says, then we left that class, and we did seven days there, and then we were going to do seven days, and where we were located is they put us in Halifax. So we drove straight through to Halifax one night, which was a terrible drive. And we got there, and we're on the boardwalk in Halifax, beautiful boardwalk, trying to witness to people. And this guy's coming down, and he's walking really, and I'm 14, I don't really know about drunk, and he's got a bottle in a bag, and I, and I go up to him and said, hey, sir, can I ask you a question? And he looked at me and said, what do you want? And he's just plastered. And I said to him, if you died right now, where would you go? He says, I'm not going to die right now, but you are, I'm going to kill you. And, and, and it's like, and, right? Now, can I ask you something? What do you do when a drunk wants to kill you, right? I said, okay, just one sec. Before you kill me, can I pray? He said, yeah, go ahead. So I said, dear Lord, 
help him to become sober because if you don't, I'm dead. And I look up and he looked at me and goes, I just became sober. I spent 20 bucks trying to get drunk tonight and you made me sober. He said, what is your problem? And all of a sudden, God said to me, tell him about Jesus. I said, the reason you're sober is because Jesus loves you so much and he, your life is messed up and you need God. Now, now here, here's the crazy thing. He didn't come to Christ, but he walked away and he said, thank you. And I, I got to give him information. I mean, this whole thing about, oh, everybody, I got witness that comes to Christ. Right? No, the point is it's not. The point is that God wants you to get so far into the Holy Spirit in many different forms of prayer, praise, intercession, all this, speaking in tongues, praying the word. So you stop being quiet and start speaking and stop being fearful, but be fearless. My last story I give to you is this. I mean, grade 11, oh, I never forget this as long as I live. I'm in grade 11, and they took all the grade 11 students and they put us in a lecture hall, huge lecture hall, and the teacher would come in every Wednesday and stand behind a microphone and teach sex education. And, uh, you know, it was like, wow, we're getting sex education. It ended up being a very boring class. And she came in one son, uh, Wednesday, and I'm sitting in the second row from back. I'm sitting beside my friend Murray and, and another guy named Richard, and we're just sitting there and minding our business. And um, she goes, excuse me, attention, attention, we're about to start class, and everybody quiets down. She goes, um, there is a born-again Christian in the class. His name's Billy Richards, and he's a virgin. Could you come down and please explain to the class why you're a virgin? Now, she never asked me ahead of time, because if she did, I wouldn't have shown up. And all of a sudden, I yelled out, no. And then Murray, who's sitting beside me, says, what's the matter? You're ashamed of God? And I looked, and I said, no, I'm not ashamed. Well, then go down, tell everybody why you're a virgin. I walked down those steps. There's three things went through me. Number one, I wanted to wet my pants. Number two, I wanted to just run. And number three, I wanted God to call the rapture. But going down the steps, I had enough brains to know when you're weak, the Bible says he is strong. Now pay attention. And I walked down the steps and the prayer from my heart went like this. Jesus, you gotta help me. I have no idea what to say. And I got behind the microphone and all of a sudden I felt God. I have not felt God like this many times in my life, maybe five. And all of a sudden I started explaining to them, I am a Christian, I have Jesus in my life. Jesus does not want me to have sex before marriage. I started talking about why, and then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit came on me and I started going for it. I was just like an American TV evangelist. I grabbed that mic, I said, girls, if you knew what these guys talk about in the change room and how they make fun of you and we know more about you and how they're using you and, they're dis and let me share this with you, they're degrading you and you girls are not made, you are the princess of God's eyes and God wants you to, and these guys are trashing you and stuff like this and some of you guys, you, you know what, you don't understand love, all you want, is, and I started going at them. My goodness, this teacher over here, she just wanted to shut me up, she, right? And then I said, and let me share this with you. I'm not ashamed to be a virgin. I'm not ashamed to have Jesus in my life, and if you want to mock me, you go ahead. But I'll tell you something, you don't have enough guts to come down here, but I did. And all of a sudden, I put the mic down, and everybody stands and starts clapping. And three girls gave me their phone number, uh, after that class. And my dad made me rip up all three phone calls. And I said, Dad, those phone calls are for follow-up ministry. 
Can I share this with you? I say this to you. Let, let me just share this with you. You are a vehicle of God to share the love of Jesus, not only physically but verbally. You are a vehicle of God to hear what people are hearing and be alert so you can minister to them. The secret here is this. Paul says, pray in the Spirit. You're an ambassador. You're an ambassador. <laughs>